You know, I recently heard a story about a doctor that decided to put his overweight patient on a diet. The doctor said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to eat regularly for two days, but then I want you to skip the third day. Follow this pattern for two weeks and come back to see me. After two weeks, if you follow my directions, you should probably lose about five pounds. But remember, this will only work if for two weeks you eat regularly for two days and you skip the third day. So the patient said okay and agreed. Well, two weeks, two weeks later, the man came back for his follow-up appointment. And to the doctor's amazement, the man had not lost five pounds, not lost ten pounds, but had lost 20 pounds. And the doctor was amazed, and he asked, he says, you lost all of this weight just by following my instructions? And then the man replied, yes, but I'll tell you, though, I thought I was going to drop dead on that third day. And the doctor asked, he said, from hunger? No, the man replied, it's from all that skipping. <laughs> Remember he told him to skip the third day? No good? Good? <laughs> oh, dieting. Uh, how many of you have ever been on a diet? And you found yourself, while you were on that diet, you were feeling really, really hungry. And feeling hungry is not a good feeling, is it? None of us like to feel hungry. It's uncomfortable. It's can be quite painful, and if we go too long without food, it can be deadly. And we see hunger all around our world. As a matter of fact, the hungersite.com estimates that one billion people in the world, one billion, and that's probably a modest number, one billion people in our world right now suffer from hunger and malnutrition. And so many more die of starvation every single day. It is definitely a problem in our world that we face. And it's unfortunate because there is enough food to go around, but it just doesn't get into the right hands in time. Nobody should ever have to experience hunger, let alone starvation, in their lives. Now, what about you and me today? Maybe we're not experiencing any hunger pains today. Maybe we're not starving today. Maybe we today haven't missed too many meals. Maybe this morning you got up and you had a really big breakfast and, and you're going to join us for lunch afterwards and have meatloaf and mashed potatoes and so on and so forth. So you're not really experiencing any hunger pains right now. Sometimes I'm reminded of a, a commercial that I saw a few years ago. It was a Taco Bell commercial. Any of you ever go to Taco Bell? Now, that's one of my son's favorite places to go to. He says, Dad, can we go to the Bell? Can we go to Taco Bell? But this commercial, I just thought it was so interesting. It's Maybe we're kind of like this guy in this Taco Bell commercial. So he eats this big lunch from Taco Bell, and then he stands up and he announces to everybody, he says, I'm full. And about that time, everybody in the restaurant starts clapping <laughs> for him. Maybe we're like that guy. None of us are really hungry. None of us are really starving today, relatively speaking. Since I've started this sermon, there have probably been hundreds, maybe even thousands of people who have died of starvation. But here's the deal. The truth is this, that even if we are physically full today, that we're not hungry, our souls can still be starving. As I said to the children this morning, our souls need to be fed 
as well. But what is it that you feed a soul? What do you feed a soul? Well, again, the title of my sermon today is Soul Food. We feed our soul soul food. Now, I'm not talking about fried chicken. I'm not talking about meatloaf. I'm not talking about pork chops. I'm from the South, so I know all of these things. I'm not talking about mashed potatoes or black-eyed peas. I'm not talking about macaroni and cheese. I'm not talking about collard greens. I'm not talking about cornbread. I see a lot of you starting to drool out there. I'm talking about a different kind of soul food. And Jesus talks about that soul food today in our Scripture passage. And let me reread that passage once again. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never go thirsty. And then Jesus goes on to say for himself, Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, and yet they died. But here's the bread that comes down from heaven, which a person may eat and not die. I am that living bread that came down from heaven, and if anyone eats of this bread, you will live forever for all of eternity and then once again going back to the Matthew passage Jesus uh, had been tempted by the devil devil rather with food he had been in the wilderness for 40 days had not eaten so you know that he was hungry and so the devil comes to him and tempts him with food he says and then Jesus responds with scripture he says it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What is Jesus talking about here? What is he pointing to? Obviously, he's pointing beyond the physical realm, and he's directing us to the spiritual, to the supernatural realm. I mean, of course, we all need bread to survive. We need food to survive, but we just can't live on bread alone, not truly live, not the abundant life that Jesus talked about. The manna that God gave to the early Israelites when they were out in the desert, it was good, and it fed their physical bodies, but it wasn't enough because they still got hungry again and that they eventually died. And the same would be true for you and me. We can eat physical food, And yet, eventually, no matter what, we will die as well. But there is more that is needed for a complete life. There's more that is needed for the abundant life that Jesus promised. There's much more than just what we see around us. We not only need food for our bodies, but we need food for our souls. And so Jesus says that the physical bread... It can really only sustain us for so long. But this living bread that Jesus talks about, that is what can sustain our soul, not only in the present moment, but for all of eternity. Yes, physical bread will leave us hungry again and again, but this living bread, this is where we find true contentment. This is where we find true fulfillment. This is where we find true satisfaction. I think of Pascal, I believe it was, who said that within each and every one of us there is a God-shaped hole. And the only thing that will fit in that is the presence of God, the living bread, the bread of life. Yes, we try to put other things in that, and we find that it will never satisfy us. We're never content, never satisfied, never happy. That's because we're no longer feeding on the bread of life, the living bread. But God has given us this bread in the person of Jesus Christ, who is the incarnation of God the Father. And when you see Jesus, you see the character and the nature of God. And so what Jesus is saying... you. You need to receive me if you truly want to experience the life that I came to give. 
He is that new bread that has come down from heaven. Just as the manna came down to the people in Israel, so has Jesus come down for you and me. And this is the bread that God has given us through His only Son, Jesus Christ. And so the, the point here is that Jesus tells us that only He can satisfy our deepest needs, our deepest desires, our deepest longings, and so forth. That's exactly what He is saying here. So to kind of summarize... What we are drawing from the Scripture here is that Jesus is essential for the real life, for true life. You know, you've heard about the phrase, the good life. Oh, that person is living the good life. But what does that even mean? What does that mean? When you say somebody is is, is living the good life, does that mean that they have a beautiful home, nice cars, Boats, plenty of money, they're living the good life. And there's nothing wrong with those things. Those things are okay, but is it really the good life? Is there something missing from that life? And Jesus would say, yes, there is. What about your soul? What about your soul? What about the gifts of God that are freely given? And so he's saying that... the There's more to life. And if we're not happy with our lives right now, then why is that? Maybe we're feeding on other things that are really not satisfying us. They're really not making us content. Maybe for a little while, but after a while we get hungry again. But the things of God, the things of God, these are eternal. And they will fill us up and satisfy us in a way that nothing else in this world can. And that's what Jesus is saying. That this living bread is essential for life. And of course, we know here that Jesus is not talking about physical bread, but a spiritual kind of of bread. He's talking about eternal life. He's talking about salvation in the present moment. And this word for salvation, and you've heard me say this before, what does that mean? Well, that means opening ourselves up to the healing of God. Healing of our brokenness so that we might experience wholeness. That word salvation comes from the word salve, which is a healing balm. It's an anointment. That's what that is. We open our lives up to healing. That's what the bread does, this living bread. And it brings about a sense of wholeness that nothing else can. And there's something else that Jesus is doing here, maybe we didn't notice, is that in the Gospel of John here, he uses the very first I am statement. He says, I am the bread of life. That's the very first I am statement in the Gospel of John. Is that on purpose? You better believe it. He's referring back to the I am statement back in Exodus that God made about God's self. God says, I am, the I am, the great I am. And it was revealed to Moses at the burning bush. So Jesus is equating himself with God, that he is God. He is the way He is the truth, and He is the life, and He's offering these gifts up to you and me. So kind of in a nutshell, that's what Jesus is saying to us here. Now, this is our problem. At least it's my problem sometimes. My problem is that we don't always believe what Jesus said. We try to find fulfillment and satisfaction in so many other kinds of quote-unquote bread. We feed on things like money. Is, there, is it any accident that a slang word for money is bread? Do you remember that? You got any bread? It's one of the slang words for, for money. Huh. And we feed on other things too. Materialism. We just think if I have more stuff, then I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be happy. 
But you know as well as I do that no matter how much stuff you get, it's never enough. The newness, the shininess wears off, and it leaves us empty once again. Maybe it's other things that we try to fill that God-shaped hole with. Maybe it's power or, or position or this and that. And again, those things in and of themselves are not necessarily bad. It's not, it's not necessarily bad to have things or to have money or to have some power or to have a, a prominent position. That's okay. But if we rely on that to try to quench that thirst and that hunger that we have within us, we're going to be disappointed every single time. We're going to find in the long run that these things, just like the manna in the desert, they're going to leave us hungering once again. In other words, too many times we try to satisfy that divine hunger, that spiritual hunger with the things of this world. Yet, once again, we find ourselves empty, unsatisfied, unfulfilled time and time again. Or think of it this way. Think of it this way. Let's say you are physically hungry. How are you going to satisfy that hunger? Well, of course, if you're physically hunger, hungry, you satisfy that with physical food. If I'm physically hungry, all of the prayer in the world, all of the reading of Scripture, all of the singing of hymns, all of that is not necessarily going to feed my physical body, is it? It's not. And the same is true of us spiritually. Think about this. We must feed upon the things of God, upon the original soul food, in order to satisfy our spiritual hunger pains. It's really very simple. Feeding on the things that God gives to us. So with that said, the question we must ask then is this. What is th this food for the soul that can feed us spiritually? What is the true bread of life? How do we receive that bread? Well, there are many different ways. There are a lot of different dishes said at the table here. Prayer and meditation feeds our soul. Worship, praise, and thanksgiving feeds our soul. Study of the Scriptures feeds our soul. Fellowship with other Christians, that feeds our soul. Receiving the sacraments like Holy Communion, that feeds not only our body, but even more so, our soul. Service to God and to others, that's an opportunity where we are fed in our soul. And other things, too, that we could feed on. I think of the, the fruit of the Spirit. It's interesting that it's called fruit and that we can feed on these things. What are they? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, self-control, those are things that we can feed on that empower and build up our soul. You see, when we feed off of these things, we then allow Jesus as the bread of life to come in and to allow that spiritual hunger, which is within all of us, to be truly satisfied. Our souls are sustained, they're nourished, and they're empowered, and we find ourselves less and less dependent on these other things, on these material things of the world. And we find ourselves more dependent on the things of God to fulfill us. So we see today the importance of receiving Jesus Christ as that true bread of life, that only He can really satisfy that deepest longing that is within all of us. Only He really can end that spiritual hunger. And that's exactly what Jesus was trying to say in John's gospel. But you know what? Let's shift gears for just a moment as I prepare to close. It's not just enough today to receive this bread of life. We are to share that bread of life with others. God gives to us so that we can go forth and give to others. Maybe you've heard this question. Maybe you've asked this question about God and, and the nature of God. And why is it that God allows millions of people 
to die of hunger. Why is it? Well, let me tell you something. God doesn't allow that. We do. You and me. We're the ones that allow it, not God. You see, God gives us the true bread of life. He gives us that living bread in hopes and expectation that we would go forth and share bread with other people. And not only physical bread, but that we would share spiritual bread. That not only we would give bread, but that we would be bread to other people. That we would be life givers of body and soul. So my friends, remember, we've been fed here today and then we are to go forth to share the bread of life with others. So remember, when we visit the sick and the lonely, we are giving them soul food. When we love the unloved, we're giving them a taste of soul food. When we offer words of encouragement to the discouraged, we give them soul food. When we say anything or do anything in God's love and in Jesus' name, we feed others food for their soul. So in conclusion, I want to uh, share with you a story. I've shared it with you before, but I thought it would be so appropriate to share once again. And the question here is, truly what are we feeding on? What are we feeding on? If we ask ourselves that question, well, this story, there is an old Cherokee legend about a grandfather, and he's teaching his grandson a very important about, uh, lesson about life. And the grandfather explains to the young boy that we all have a battle that is going on inside of us. There's a battle going on inside of us. And this is what the grandfather said. He said, my son, the battle within you is between two wolves that live inside us all. One is evil. It is angry. It's envy, it's jealousy, it's sorrow, it's regret, it's greed, it's arrogance, it's self-pity, it's guilt, it's resentment, inferiority, it's lies, it's false pride, it's superiority and ego. That's the evil wolf. And yet the other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion and faith and then the grandson he thought about it for a minute and then he asked his grandfather he says grandfather which wolf wins and the grandfather said the one you feed the one you feed which wolf are you feeding today? There's the good, and there is the evil. Let us today and every day turn to God and to His Son, Jesus Christ, and receive that living bread, receive true soul food. And God's people said, Amen.